Wack Vegas. The shot heard around the Wack. Rice for the win. He baked it in. Jabari Rice keeps New Mexico State's 15-game win streak intact. On the women's side, Grand Canyon's Jada Holland heats up to put the Lopes in first place. Plus, we'll talk with the Wax leading scorer in men's basketball, Seattle U's Terrell Brown. That's all ahead on the Road to Wack Vegas. I'm Jim Hayford, the head coach at Seattle University, and this is the Road to Wack Vegas. New Mexico State going on to the tournament. Just a phenomenal game. What college basketball is all about. Hi, I'm Dan Marley, head basketball coach at Grand Canyon University, and this is the Road to Wack Vegas. Welcome to the Road to Wack Vegas. I'm Rachel Vigil. We are down to just three weeks left in the regular season, and we might have had the most exciting game of the year this past Saturday in Las Cruces. New Mexico State hosting Utah Valley, the Wolverines take a four-point lead with the Jamison Overton Jam. The Aggies then retake the lead with under two minutes to go as forward Yvonne Aracochea scores inside. But back comes UVU. The Wolverines lead by two after guard TJ Washington's free throws with six seconds to go. Then the Aggies get the ball. Here's Adam Young with the call. Rice for the win. He banked it in! Mexico State wins 84 to 82. That is their 15th straight victory, and they are now 12 and 0 in the WAC. The Aggies can clinch the top seed in the Hercules Tires WAC tournament, presented by Ticket Smarter, with a win this Saturday against UTRGV. That'll be a 7 p.m. tip time on the WAC Digital Network. Our WAC Spotlight game on ESPN Plus is a good one as Dan Marley's GCU Lopes travel to Seattle to take on Jim Hayward's Red Hawks. That is a 7 p.m. Pacific time broadcast on Thursday. Grand Canyon currently sits in the second spot for the WAC tournament, while Seattle U is tied for fourth. Join Max Gunn and Ced Bonner on the call from the Emerald City, plus check out our interview with guard Terrell Brown in our next segment. Also on Thursday, CSU Bakersfield visits Utah Valley, and on Wednesday night, California Baptist is at Kansas City. Both of those games are on the WAC Digital Network. The Ticket Smarter WAC Player of the Week is UTRGV's Leslie Varner II. The senior forward grabbed a career-high 14 rebounds in the Vaqueros' 80-72 win over Utah Valley last week. Varner followed that up with a 23-point performance against Seattle U. UTRGV has now won five games in a row. As we mentioned, UTRGV plays at New Mexico State on Saturday. Also on the WDN, California Baptist visits Chicago State. GCU is at Utah Valley and Seattle U hosts CSU Bakersfield. Coming up next on the road to WAC Vegas, we'll talk with Seattle U guard Terrell Brown, who's hoping to lead his Red Hawks to a victory in our WAC Spotlight game this week. We'll be right back. Moments that will never be forgotten. March was made for this. The 2020 WAC Basketball Tournament at the Orleans Arena in WAC Vegas. March 11th through the 14th, be a part of the madness and witness the triumph. Ticket information, go to WACSports.com. Welcome back to the Road to WAC Vegas. I'm Rachel Vigil. We have Terrell Brown from Seattle U Men's Basketball with us today. Terrell, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Terrell, two losses on the road against New Mexico State and UTRGV. What needs to happen to get back on track? Um, I think the biggest thing is that we have to put together, um, we have more urgency on defense, defensive end. Um, you know, we looked at a lot of stats today and yesterday about like the things that we messed up on and it's like more mental errors than like physical errors. So as long as we stay together and, you know, have some urgency on defense, we'll be really fine. From a leadership position, what can you do to help your teammates? Um, I think that I can talk more, be more vocal, even though, you know, being a leader, you know, sometimes it's uncomfortable over talking and you know trying to put people in the right position but I think like what my team needs is for me to do that so I'm willing to take that role even more. You play Grand Canyon on Thursday that's our WAC Spotlight game on ESPN Plus. Last time you played in Phoenix GCU won by three but you had a season high 31 points. What needs to be done this time around to hopefully get the win against the Lopes? Um, I don't think it's about uh, points in my end. I feel like um, a lot of teams now are trying to like you know, um, figure out different ways to stop me. And um, I just figure out, I need to figure out how to get my teammates more involved. So even that, if that's me being a decor or anything, you know, they get, you know, Morgan Memes or Riley Grisby and Miles more touches and that's fine. As long as we win the game, that's all I'm really worried about. What do you see from GCU when you're scouting them that you can hopefully capitalize on? Um, 
I feel like last year's team was way more deeper. Um, they had two big men that, that were really good, and they still have a le- lever. Um, Carl Johnson's a good guard. <clears throat> they have really good guards played with Isaiah Brown, um, Blackshear, and uh, Mikey. So I think I think they have like a, a good uh, talented team. Um, I think if we you know give Miles more post touches and hopefully get lever in foul trouble, then they don't have a backup big man. So that'd be a, a big piece for us. This year you lead the WAC in points with 19.7 per game. That's up five points from last year where you were seventh in the WAC with 14.1. What would you say is the difference between the two years for you? Um, my teammates believe in me and trust in me. Um, that would be the biggest thing. Uh, they put me in position to, you know, deliver. So I feel like it's about trust. So they trust me to take shots and, you know, make shots in there. They also know that every shot's not going to go in, but, you know, they depend on me. So hopefully down the stretch, you know, when the game gets closer and closer that, you know, uh, I deliver for them guys. What does that mean to you to have your teammates believe in you so much? Uh, I think it, it's trust. It's the work I put in, um, you know, starting out at, at JUCO. And they've seen my growth through my last year and then this year, just how, how much better I keep getting throughout the season. Uh, this believe that like the grind inside the season is just as important as the all the season grind. So I think it's really big. You came to Seattle U as a walk on. What when you first stepped foot on campus, how did you know that you wanted to play here? Um, I just wanted the opportunity to play Division One. Um, you know, a lot of coaches passed over me and Coach Hafer gave me an opportunity to play Division One. So like I mean it it kinda happened like almost like perfect. So it's a good feeling to be from Seattle and play in Seattle. Do you feel like when you're playing, you kind of remember that chip on your shoulder a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that it's going to go with me everywhere I go. You know, just, you know, being a walk-on. I mean, with nothing, like, I don't take that personally or anything. It's just the situation, how it handled and worked out. But I feel like the chip on my shoulder will always be there, the fight and just the hunger to, you know, keep getting better and prove people wrong. So I was on your Twitter page yesterday. I was just kind of wanting to learn a bit more about you. And I saw this quote, and it says, bet on yourself, then double down. What does that mean to you? Um, <laughs> that quote came from um, when I uh, left Western Oregon and, like, took a year off of basketball and just started working out. When I got back, a lot of people was like, do you still love playing basketball? And, you know, like, like what's like what's your next plan? I was like in my head, I was like I'm always play basketball regardless of anything. Like I love basketball, you know, it's my freedom. Like it's somewhere I go, and my ha- happy place, I guess. So then, like um, I think I seen Dion Waiters posted on Instagram. It was just like you know, like when like that's the only thing you can really control is like you know how hard you work. So I think I always like this put my all my money on myself because I know how hard I can go, and then like. If I, you know, double down, then I know for sure, like, I have to get it done. So it's like, it's self-belief, self-confidence. All right, so now we want to learn a little bit more about you. Who would you say is your best friend on the team? Oh, man, I don't want to get nobody's feelings hurt, but uh, <laughs> Joe Wall. Joe Wall is really my best friend. Uh, what's your favorite WAC city to travel to? WAC city? Uh, I, mean, I don't have a favorite city. Uh, I mean, Chicago's nice. Chicago's a nice city. So, I mean, I would say maybe Chicago. What about favorite player in the NBA? Ooh. Uh, I got a lot of favorite players. But um, right, currently playing that's not injured. I like Trey Young's game a lot. Trey Young's a good, good player. If you could be any NBA player besides Trey, who would you want to meet? Meet um, LeBron James, for sure. The GOAT, right? Yeah, him and, him and Kevin Durant for sure. I like both of them guys. Is there any game that you really look forward to playing every year? Uh, I don't think so. I think every game I come in the same approach of, you know, coming out on top and uh, winning the game. So I don't think there's any game that's like circled more on my schedule than any other game. WAC tournament's coming up here in just a few weeks. You've already experienced it once. What would you say you're looking forward to most about this one? Um, taking one game at a time and hopefully playing on Saturday and hone that trophy up. All right, last question. Would you rather have 40 points in a game or have the buzzer beater three? Buzzer beater three. Why? Because we won the game as a team. Okay. Thanks, Terrell. Well, I definitely appreciate your time today, and best of luck on Thursday against Grand Canyon. Thank you. I Thank you. I appreciate it. That's Terrell Brown from Seattle U Men's Basketball. Coming up on the road to WAC Vegas, GCU Women's Basketball surprising run. 
plus ways for you to win tickets to WAC Vegas. We'll be right back. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field, on the track, on the court, in the pool, and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents, the officials, the fans, and our team. Great sportsmanship is about keeping everything in perspective. It's about taking ownership after a loss. And being humble after a win. We hope you'll team up with us by staying positive on the sidelines. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. Welcome back to the road to WAC Vegas and women's basketball. We had a matchup of the top two teams in the conference standings and Grand Canyon came up with a big win on the road. GCU freshman Jada Holland scored 15 fourth quarter points at Kansas City to help the Lopes to a 62-56 victory. She also had 15 fourth quarter points against Chicago State and is the WAC Ticket Smarter Player of the Week. The Lopes are now 9-2 and, and have a half game lead over the Roos in the WAC standings. Grand Canyon is also in our WDN Featured Women's Game of the Week. Holland and the Lopes host Kamira Sanders and Seattle U. The Red Hawks have won five games in a row and are tied for third place in the WAC standings. That game is Thursday night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on the WAC Digital Network. Also on Thursday night, Utah Valley visits CSU Bakersfield. That'll be on ESPN3. On Wednesday, it's Kansas City traveling to California Baptist. That game is on the WAC Digital Network. On Saturday, it's a rematch of last year's WAC Women's Championship game as UTRGV hosts New Mexico State. Seattle U is at CSU Bakersfield on ESPN3. California Baptist entertains Chicago State, and Grand Canyon plays Utah Valley on the WDN. Our WAC Vegas ticket contest last week had an Oscars theme. Which player or team gave the best performance this year? We had a number of nominations, including Jabari Rice's 29 points and buzzer beater against Utah Valley this past week. We also got California Baptist Milan Aqua's 37 point performance at South Dakota. But the winner is New Mexico State men's basketball team winning over Mississippi State. That game was played in Jackson, Mississippi back in December. The Aggies won 58 to 52 behind 18 points from Johnny McCants. The Bulldogs, by the way, are now 16 and nine and are seven and five in the SEC. Congratulations to J.A. Sandoval, you're getting tickets to WAC Vegas. For this week's contest in honor of President's Day, who is your Mount Rushmore for WAC basketball? That's the top four figures in the history of the conference. Tweet your response to us and give us the reasons why. Bonus points if you actually create the WAC Mount Rushmore. Make sure to use the hashtag KRachel to enter the contest. We'll tell you who the winner is next week. You can make sure to get your tickets to WAC Vegas by buying them also. Just go to the WAC Sports website and click on the WAC Vegas ticket button. For the WAC Digital Network, I'm Rachel Leo. Yeah.